29 people watching. That's stressful, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you all ready to get this thing started? Oh, we, we are, are man. live. Coming at you from the D2 studios. <laughs> Studios. Multiple studios. <laughs> in Let's stop Switzerland lying to people. <laughs> Vienna. Um, yeah, we'd love to do this uh, in the same room. That would be fun. Um, we don't have a studio. Please send money for studio. So uh, first of all, let me just uh, do like some housekeeping. Can everybody hear me? Can everyone hear Fabio? Can everyone hear Nicola? Hello. One, two, three. One, two, three. It'll Is take a second been? before we know. Yeah. <laughs> but, but so far, so good. I think it's working. It seems everything's working fine. Let me know if you can hear me doing ASMR noises. <laughs> I, I have to say we're super excited to do this today. It's something that we don't do very often on our channel. Uh, or actually, we've probably never done it before. Um, but in the context of the challenge... Um, we think it really makes sense to do something like this. I know that on the matte paint side, uh, the, the, in the community, they've done this before. Nicola is one of the people who's done this before there. So um, we're very excited to have him today on our channel uh, in, in cooperation with matte paint in this contest. Um, Fabio, what Yo. do you think? Yeah, As I'm very excited user. also because whilst we were doing the testing and everything, Nicola has already shown us some of the stuff that he's going to talk about. And being the Blender user that I am, you know, if people did not know I'm a Blender user, do you have two minutes to talk about Blender or no? Because <laughs> that's what Blender's users do, right? That's, that's how the community grows by talking about Blender. But anyway, I'm very excited to, to get into this because I think that there are going to be a lot of cool tricks that we can learn and maybe get some inspiration for this challenge. Yeah, I think so too. I think it'll be helpful to people if, if someone hasn't really gotten started yet. I mean, seven days is from what we've had in our own experience, plenty of time for people to do something here because we've seen it happen many times. People giving us four or five images during a challenge. In, in Don't a worry, period. real artists will finish the project the day before the deadline. <laughs> That's right. If you're a really good artist, you'll do it five minutes after the deadline and ask, please, <laughs> can I post it? <laughs> so... Um, Nicole, I'd like to introduce you as well. I mean, I, I I don't know that much about you. We actually have met for the first time today, which is uh, yeah. which is the beautiful thing about the internet, um, in person, face to face. Uh, so, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. So, hi everyone. My name is Nikola Angelkowski. I'm a concept artist and journalist working in the film and game industry for six years now. Some of the projects that I worked on as a journalist are Alien Covenant, Passenger, Spider-Man Homecoming, um, Downfall, and other small bits of projects. Uh, currently, I decided to switch to Blender like at version 2.73. And ever since then, I never looked back. And every single person that's talked to me like, dude, you got to try out this. I'm like, nah, fam. Like, nah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nicola, let me add to your um, to what you said about your portfolio of projects that you worked on. Fuck me, right? <laughs> All right. Um, are we ready to move forward with this? Okay, I just saw that Ian <clears throat> Ian uh, was telling me, which I remember meeting Ian in uh, uh, in Berlin at the playgrounds. Were you there as well? Yeah, we actually met. We were there actually. <laughs> Are you serious? We yeah. met there. Oh my god. Yeah, we were on the boat and we were talking like together. Ah, on the boat. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I remember. Yeah, there was some drinks there. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, that's no excuse. Uh, but um, well, it's nice to uh, see you again here on uh, you know through the internet. Um, I Pretend really, I like feel that really didn't happen, Nicola. <laughs> <laughs> It's hard. It's hard. It meets so many people. It's hard sometimes to remember everybody. Uh, yeah. But Ian, thank you for bringing that up. I appreciate it. And Nicola, I'm very sorry. <laughs> no, no, so, it's okay, man. It's okay. Yeah, let's, it happens. Let's jump into it. Yeah. Okay. So I'll start by sharing my screen. So where was it? 
I think it's this one. Nope. Can you see the concept image? Yes, right I can now? see an image. Right. Yeah. Like now a... I can see the, the matte paint image. Uh, uh, wait, let me switch it. It's supposed to be showing. Oh, there we go. Okay, yes. Can you see it now? Yeah. That's so it, yes. today I'll be showing you how you can create digital favelas, basically. Uh, it's a region inside Brazil where the architecture, everything goes, basically. So like when you start to do environment like this, where you have different types of shapes and complexity in a building, it's easier for you to start like organizing from the start, like what's your plan and how you're going to approach this. So when you think of digital favelas, uh, just sec, you usually think of like when you go to the references, it usually looks like this. And for someone who just started modeling or even to some experienced artists, like when they see this, they go like, oh man, like I don't know where to start first. And the first thing that you always want to do is like split the image into big, medium and small. So like when you look at the buildings, like I know like the basic shape is going to be like more blockish. Every single floor is going to have like different element to it. So it will have like a different type of randomness. So like while I was researching this, I managed to make uh, this few buildings by myself. So these ones were entirely made in Blender and the process of this is fairly simple. You just start with the mirror image, oh, sorry, mirror uh, tool where you basically can duplicate and create shapes from basic cube. And after that, it's just a cube projection and slap the materials. But one thing that I kind of discovered in the process where I was working for a client is like, I had a client job, something similar to this, where I had to do an environment with favelas. And well, one of the buildings was actually duplicated too many times. And one of the clients said like, can you do something or switch the building from a different view angle? And I remember like I already rendered the image and I had to go back now, re-render it and open the Photoshop file, do, disconnect like the smart layers and start like working from the ground up. And I was like, oh man, like, is there like an easier way to approach this? So I started to look into the process of like, how can I photo bash inside Blender? And I just uh, discovered the process of shrink wrap where you basically take images and you can slap them on, on the architecture. And you can basically control them to create dirts like gravels, graffiti, and whatnot to help me out on the concept art process. But normally, like when you work in a studio, like if you're doing the production assets, like if you did this, you're fired basically. But for concept art, everything goes. So <laughs> like for me, like the, the fact that someone cannot like constrain me on what to do, it's actually freeing. And the fact that like I, right now I can do basically whatever I want with inside Blender. So uh, after like I made the buildings, uh, I started to scatter the scene and this is the final result. This is how it looks, the render preview of what I have. And this is how the final scene should look like. Sorry if it lags just a little bit. Uh, I noticed it's lagging at my side. But yeah, this is how the final scene should look like. So without further ado, like let's start modeling. So I'll go back to the previous scene. I'll just hide everything right here so I don't see any of the other buildings. I'll start by making like a new connect, uh, new collection and I'll just name it like the previous ones. Like this one will be A005. And normally like when you start modeling, you start with a cube. My first goal here is to, oh, let me go back to normal preview. Uh, it's just to change the origin point to be underneath the cube. Uh, the reason why I'm doing it is going to come later on when I show on the process where you can procedurally generate the building floors. So once I have this, I, I start to input the parameters of the building. So I know that it's going to be three meters high, it's going to be four meters wide and six meters long. So after I have this, <clears throat> I start by splitting the architecture, uh, sorry, the cube in separate parts. And the reason why I'm doing that is after I select everything, I only deselect these two faces and delete everything else. And then when I go to, oh, let me move this to the side. Uh, and then I just add a mirror modifier and I just input the X and Y axis. The reason why I do that is because I want to have a symmetrical looking box 
where I basically when I do the changes on the one side, I can see the changes on the other one as well. So after I have that, uh, I'll go back to the front view and I'll start doing like splits for the windows. So I'll push this one just a little bit up. Oops, select the previous one, push it down like so. And then I'll just do a split and now I have the window. So once I have this, then I'll separate it as a selection. And right now already you can see that once I click that, now I have the windows separated from the building. And the reason why I'm doing so the duplicate I'll... stuff, it's because I'm thinking of a process where I can basically create one look on the one side and another from the other side. So once I have this, I'll just go back to the front view and start doing the windows. So I start by setting the shape and then pushing it inward by let's say, um, oops, control Z. So E Y, it's going to be 0 0.03. And then I'm going to separate it again, go back to the front view and do another inset to squeeze it out to make that window frame. Just push it in by 0 0.03. So after I have that, uh, I have the windows, uh, I'll start to add like different one on the side. And I know because this is a mirror edge, if I start to extrude it, it's going to have the same look from the other side because I have the split right here in the middle. So what I would do is just insert it again and scale it down to make like a small bathroom window. Oops. And scale it to the side. And I'll, for this one, I'm just going to do uh, the separate selection where I have both of them. And again, to the left side, do another inset and just push it in by 0 0.3. So once I have those now, I'm comfortable to move up to the other part. And like, remember that right now I haven't started modeling the first floor of the building. For me, it's more uh, kind of, it's a thought process where I can easily like design something on the bottom because it's not going to be fairly visible in the scene for what I'm planning to do, but rather the, well, the top parts are going to be more visible. So I'm thinking about fixing them first rather than continuing downwards. So then I'll just extrude this one, three units, like these are called units on the sides. So once I have it, I go to wireframe mode. Oops. Uh -huh. Did I hide it? All right, there we go. So once I have it, I'll go to wireframe mode and I'll just split the top selection. So once I have there, like I don't need the mirror from the both sides because I know that I'll be doing like different stuff for the other side. So I'll just split it. I'll create three insets, scale it down and just push it upwards a little bit so it's not connected to the ground. And for this one, I know that this will have like some kind of a balcony. So I'll just push it inward just a little bit and then I'll do another extrusion where I can go in and push it just a little bit like right here. And I'll select these faces and push them down. Oops, oh, easy, oh, there we go, okay, so. And now I'm just going to push it down as it matches the line that I have from the top part. So once I have that, uh, now I know that like for these faces, like I can easily create a window. So I'm going to separate that selection. And inside I'm gonna go and dissolve the edges that I already have. So once I dissolve it, I can go in, create a new edge. And with the inset, I can basically split the, uh, the separation between the two boxes. So I can create di a different, uh, two different types of windows. So once I have that, it's the same process again. It's just like extrusion, separation, extrusion, separation until I have the desired look for the windows that I want. So again, scale, scale it again and push it in by minus 0 0.03, oops. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now right here, as you can notice, like I have this weird looking 
thing inside. That Blender is basically telling me that I have a face within a face. So I need to uh, delete those faces so I can fix that problem. So, oops. Uh, so now I have to clean everything that Blender is telling me like, yo, like you cannot have this. So then I'm just going to select the two edges and fill in the holes. Actually, better not. I'm just going to leave it like this. And then I'm going to select this one, separate it. And from this one, I'm going to extrude it in. So I'm going to treat it as a separate mesh because like afterwards, I'm going to add some details to this or maybe like some bars and stuff like that. So then I'll join this to the base. And now I'm going to do the third floor. And for this one, I'm just planning to do like the standard rooftop. I'm just going to extrude it out at three and grid fill and automatically it's filled in. So then I'm going to select the top part, going to top view and set like so, and then push it in. Nicola, do you have the shortcut viewer for people to... <clears throat> uh, I don't think I have it right now. It's um, all right. Don't, don't worry then. Yeah. Uh, okay. Actually, actually, I can tell you like what buttons I press. Like, uh, so basically how I move along, it's basically uh, this too. So if I have a cube, like G is to select, R is to rotate, S is to scale. Uh, to move it up in an axis, just press G and Z, which is up. G and Y is to the sides, uh, sorry, front and back, and G and X is to the sides. So it's basically using the primary tools that you need to do. The only difference that I did inside this process is this top on the rooftop, which I'll show again. So just a sec. Oop. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, so I'll delete it and start this one from scratch. So I'm going to delete the faces and have to delete this one as well. So, okay, so if I want to do like the top part for the rooftop, I'll just hold Alt and click on the edge so it will make a bridge selection. Then I'll go to the front view because I want the rooftop to be matched between one unit. So it's going to be one meter high, like so. And then what I'll do is just press Z and hold it, then go to wireframe and then press three to select the faces. Here at the top, like you, you can switch between edges, vertices and faces. So after I select the faces, I just drag and then separate the selection. So once I have this, I can go back, do the bridge selection again with Alt and clicking and then F3 and type in grid fill and it will automatically connect every single uh, edge that I have inside the model. So once I have that, I select everything. I go to the top view, which is by pressing the seven uh, numpad button, and then I'll just inset and just going back into the front view, go back to wireframe mode and extrude it down. And there we go. So that's the top part. And now what I'm going to do is grab everything, push it upwards, just three cubes. So you know it's like going to be three meters. And for this one, I'm going to do the bottom part or the entrance of the building. So once I have this, uh, I'll go back to wireframe mode and it's just, again, the same process, like separate the selection, go back here. I know that I have this modifier mirrors and I'm going to click apply to it. So it doesn't like duplicate the same information that I'm trying to do through the, through the other side. So once I have it, uh, I'm thinking like, okay, like, like let's make like an entrance to a garage or something like that. So I'll just select these faces, separate the selection, delete. Nicola, are you looking at references as you model? Yeah, uh, that's, that's what I do. Like basically, okay, let me, uh, switch again. Uh, so basically what I do when I model is like try to convey the information that I'm seeing from images. So basically for this building that I'm currently modeling, it's kind of based from this one, but I didn't want to do the same thing. So I'm scrolling over through the images and trying to find like, okay, so for one floor, it could look like this. For one floor, it can look basically something like this. 
I'm just trying to convey like, okay, I know it's going to be a boxy shape, but the layout uh, for each floor is very different. Like, like here, you can see it clearly. Below you, like you have the garages. Upstairs, like you have curved windows. And above that is like a separate type of building that are trying to build on top of what it's already existing. So I'm thinking through that same process, like when I model my, uh, my buildings, like when I go back here, like you can see that every single building floor, like it's different. And right now it's looking very basic, but once I add materials, like it will give out more information. So once I have this, uh, I'll just continue modeling like the garage door. And it's fairly simple. Like once you have it, just separate it from what you have from the geometry and then just add one edge loop, push it to the top, extrude this edge. So it's going to be like that top box from the garage door. And then I'm going to separate this selection right here, which is going to be like that rough look from the garage doors. And I'm just going to select between edge so I can extrude them out. Sorry, not extrude them, but pull them out. So once I have that, I'll just pull it in. And then uh, here is the part where I want to put uh, the garage door to be a bit open. So I'll just shift click. So uh, shift click on the top right here. It doesn't matter like where it is. I'm just going to go here to the object and say, okay, so I want this object right here to be set to the origin point or the 3D cursor. So it's going to be easier for me to scale it up. So as, oops, as uh, Y. And right now, like I can open and control like how it's going to open or how far it's going to go. So once I have that, I'll go back to the point where like, okay, so now I have the base. Now I want to kind of texture the whole thing. But before I do that, I want to add like additional assets like antennas, pipes or AC units and whatnot. So to do that, like I know that for this building, like right now I already finished with the mirror stuff because I already have the information from uh, the other side. And right now, like I already have these cubes. So I'm gonna reuse that information to be like a base for my AC units. So I'm gonna, oops, uh, control C, oh, Macedonia. All right, there we go. So now I'm going to duplicate it by pressing Shift D. And I'm going to press escape, but it's going to be back at the same place. So for me, in order to extract this, I have to go again, separate the selection. And right now, that phase that I extracted is not going to be like separated from the mesh, but rather a duplicate from what I already had. So I'm going to select one of those edges, push it up a little bit, and then just extrude it out like so. So this is like going to be like the base box for my AC unit. And I'm going to scale it just a little bit. But right now, if you see it, like as I'm scaling, the origin point of the mesh is trying to find the center of gravity that I have, sorry, center in the world space. So in order to fix this, again, I have to go object, set origin, set to the mass of the surface. So right now as a scale, it's going to be the center of mass of the object. So after I scale it down, I go to the left view by pressing the wave button on your keyboard. I don't know how to pronounce that button. So once I have it into position, now I can do like, okay, so now that I have this, now I need to model like the frames that are holding this thing. So to do the frames, I'm just going to duplicate the box as it is. And here's like the simple part. Like you can just go in, like scale it down, go to a viewport, just match it to a perspective. And it doesn't matter that it's not con it's connected or not to the mesh because like further down the road, I'm thinking like, how can I make this thing like have a separate material without me joining them and just opening a separate UV for it, which is going to be like a pace thinking a, low, a long process. So I'm thinking like, how can I make my life easier while I'm doing this stuff? So once I have it, I'll go back to the front view and I'm just going to push it a bit to the side and maybe scale it down because it's a bit too big. So once I have it like, okay, so now I want to match like the other side, like one way to do it is just like duplicating it like this, or another way to do it is just by adding an array modifier. Uh, array modifier is basically like taking a duplicate from what you already have in the scene. Uh, or sorry, the mesh. And like by increasing the count, we can tell him like how many of these things that you want. So currently I want two, but I want to change the distance. 
So I'm going to change like the X factor to it. But for me to properly do this, I'll just go to the wireframe mode and like while holding shift, I'm slowly dragging to a point where I think it would be perfect. And once I'm satisfied with it, oops. Uh, and once I'm satisfied with it, I'm just going to click apply and have it there. So that's going to be just a box. Like after that, with all of the details that I need to add like to an AC unit, I'll just use the texture and that's it. So one thing to add also is like seeing from the references is a lot of antennas. So to do an antenna is like fairly simple. You just go to the basic meshes, go to, let's say a UV sphere, and you don't have to increase the poly count or anything, just shade it smooth, go to the left view, and now change it to wireframe mode. So then just press tab, select half of it, make sure that you're in face, face selection and just delete the faces. So right now, like I have this simple like looking circle, well, wait, I didn't cut it perfectly. Right. Left view, wireframe, select. Oh, there we go. Faces. So now that I have that, like to do the side of the dish, just press S and just scale it in. And there I have a satellite dish. So I'm going to scale it down. And now I'm thinking like, okay, so I know that satellite dishes, like seen from the references, they have that small part from the antenna and basically it's connected to the dish. So to do that, like basically what I'm going to do is like, I'm not going to do like another cube and start the process over again. I'm just going to duplicate the same one that I have, just push it down, scale it up. And I'm trying to reuse as much as possible of the basic things that I have in the scene without me like going, okay, so I need to scale it down, do it again. And I'm just going to push this one into perspective. So it's like in the center, push it down and then I'm going to go to the left side and bring it back just a little bit. So then I'm just going to start by extruding. Like, so I'm going to go back to the left view. So E and Z, push it down, then E and Z another time. So again, and then I'm going to, oops, then I'm going to select this face again to the left view. Uh, can you guys see my screen? For my side, it's starting to lagging a lot. Looks good. It, uh, <laughs> it looks good. Ah, it looks good. Okay, perfect. There are st there are some people that are still stuck at the first cube. So, <laughs> oh, oh, okay. So once you have this, like you just basically don't join them. Right now, because currently, like, if I join them together and if I apply material, it's going to be applied to the whole thing. So right now, I just need, like, one version of it where I can reuse it constantly once I apply the material. So let me go to front view and find, like, a place for this thing. So I'm thinking, like, it's going to be something like this. Then I'm going to duplicate it, add another one, because, like, Brazilian people want, want to watch football and every single person needs to have an antenna. So once I have this, like going back through the assets that uh, we have for this challenge, what I can do is just go to file, append, find the assets from the digital favela. And then I'll just go, okay, so I want to append this collection. So now once I have the assets, like I know that I want to reuse some of these things because I already have modeled windows, doors, and whatnot. So I'm thinking like, ah, oh, okay, so I want to reuse this thing right here from the rooftop because normally I don't want to spend like a lot of time like modeling these things. Why when I can kit best stuff that I already have for the challenge. So once I have it, I just go to object, set the origin to center of mass surface. And then what I can do is just reuse this as a base for like covers of when it rains and stuff like that. So I'm just going to go to the front view. I'm going to add this like maybe uh, at the top of the garage. So I'm going to scale it out on the X axis like so. And then I'll go back to left view and front view. It's like going back and forth constantly with this thing. But like once you find like the perfect look that you're currently looking for, it's just like, it's fairly easy. Like, and I know a lot of people, like when they grab this assets and people who are basically first time using like 3D tools, like what I'm suggesting for you to do is just like duplicate the thing, like push it up. 
explore with the shapes. Like, don't just use like this thing as it is and just try to apply basic material and paint on top of it. The point of this thing is like for you to kit bash and explore what you can do with the, all of the assets that you have been provided. So uh, going back to this, once I have it into position, I'm just going to do a rotation. And the reason why I did the origin point in the center for me right now, it's much easier to do the rotation like this rather than it being somewhere uh, around here as it is. So once I have it, I know that for this thing, I need like some structure that is going to hold it. So what I'm going to do again is duplicate the cube, push it down. Then I'll go back to front view, scale it in like so. And I'm thinking like what is going to be the basic shape of the thing that it's holding. So I'm trying to push it in, go back to the left view. And now, okay, I'm going to go to wireframe and say, huh, okay. So this cube, it's going like further up. Oop, there you go. Uh, did I get it? Close it. All right, there we go. Okay, so once you go to the cube, like uh, I know it's going to be like, okay, so this part like at the top, like it's too distracting, like I need to fix that. So what I'm going to do is just press tab, go to edit mode, uh, then press two so to select one of those edges. And I'm going to select this edge at the center. So for me to better view like what am I doing, I'm just going to go to the left view and go to wireframe mode. So I'm going to push it down as it's matching the perspective. So I'm trying to do like a basic shape that is going to be like a holder for it. And I don't want to like bother too much like with the complexity of it because later on I'm going to use like a different modifier which is going to help me out with designing that thing. So once I have it into position, then I'm going to add a wireframe modifier and already like it's giving me the shape that I was actually looking for. So the only thing that I'm going to do is just increase the thickness on the right side. So maybe 0 0.03, like so. And I'm gonna say, okay, so before I apply anything, I just want to add another array modifier, go to the front view. And let me hide all of these things beneath from the scene. So I'm thinking, yeah, there we go. So once I have it into position, I'll go back to wireframe mode so I can better see like how the asset is going to look while I'm splitting it. So first I'm thinking like, okay, so let me increase like the distance between it and just increase the count. So let me go back to front here. Uh, the reason why it's not showing this thing is because like it's currently in the group of the collection. So I have to go back and find it. Like this is the only thing that you have to do. Uh, once you have the asset, like scroll through the collection and try and find it. I know it's going to be like an annoying process, but it's better to fix this problem like uh, as fast as possible rather than just leaving it for the last thing. Okay, so now I have it right here. I'm just going to push it up out from that collection and put it in my collection. Nicola, and I think that once you are on the hierarchy, you can uh, push the period key on the numpad and it will work just like when you find an asset in the 3D scene. Yeah, yeah. no, uh, the reason why I'm doing it that way is just to show like people like curious how many things that you have because I don't want uh -huh, to okay. press buttons. Like I'm trying to talk to them like basically what I'm doing process to process without me like going back and forth to uh, hotkeys and everything. So uh, once I have this, like what I'm going to do is just stretch it out just a little bit. So it's matching like the point that I'm having here. So once I'm satisfied, I'm gonna say, okay, just apply and I'm going to apply again. And now I have this as a mesh. So then what I'm going to do like, okay, so I know like this thing is looking good. I'm gonna push it up just a little bit. Then for this one, I'm going to scale it like this. And then I'm going to say, okay, like let's reuse the same thing, but it's like it has the same count. It doesn't like stretching to the other side. And then what I can do is just like, okay, so let's say for this windows right here, I'm going to rotate it minus 90, push it to the side. And I'm trying like to think at this time, like, how different can I make every single floor? Like, it's not about like having the symmetrical look that we're used to seeing in buildings. Like right now I'm just focusing on like, okay, so 
after I have this, how can I make every single floor different so it matches like the favela look that we see from the images? So once I have this, like I know for this part, like seeing from the reference images from the favelas, uh, let me show back that screen. Uh, okay, there we go. So like scrolling through the images, like I know like some balconies have like that wireframe look like borders and stuff like that around the windows or where was it? Uh, yeah, basically like stuff like this, which is in the midst of a, of a construction, that's basically like a frame that's been left or not, not as a finished construction, or maybe like looking back here, like I know like uh, this building is like, it's more clean on the top part, but the bottom one like has seen like some weathering or like the, uh, the like damage to it. So right now, like I'm seeing like this images and I'm thinking like, okay, so what can I make it look different besides the material? So I know like I've seen like a lot of these things and honestly, I have no idea what's the purpose of this. Is it to collect rain or I don't know. So I'm thinking like, okay, so I'm gonna try and do that for the rooftop. I'm gonna go back here and like start with a cylinder. Yeah, it seems to me it's like some kind of gravity uh... Uh, water you know to provide water for the house but it's like using gravity like the water towers you know yeah it's tr yeah it's crazy though they're on every house it looks like yeah no that that was the one thing that i was going through the images like trying to figure out like okay like what's the purpose of this thing like i've seen multiple like but i still don't know like what's the use of them but anyway back to the scene so let me uh Okay, there we go. So once I have the cylinder in scene, what I can do is just try to match it. Like, so I know it's going to look something similar to this. It's not going to be accurate, but I'm trying to do a basic shape of it. So it will look at least similar to what we have. So once I have this, I'm going to separate the selection. I'm gonna say, okay, so now I'm going to extrude, extrude it in, then push it out just a little bit, then in. Then down, again, scale it, push it in like so now. So this is going to be like the top part. And right now it's looking very boxy. I want to have that uh, smooth look, but right now if I shade it smooth, like the geometry is losing its contact. That's why we need to add some tightness to it. So by adding edge loops and bringing them closer to the edges, you're basically telling Blender, okay, so look, uh, this thing needs to be like smooth, but also make sure that it has that sharp edge look to the geometry. So I'm basically going to repeat the process constantly until I find the thing that I'm looking for. So I know I'm going to add edge loops around here. It's going to be like one here as well. And for this one, I'm just going to delete the faces, grab all of this and grid fill. So once I have that, like I have that as like a clean geometry right now. So I don't need to worry too much. And I don't want to add too many subdivisions because like once I start to scatter the scene, it's going to be like way too many polygons. I'm trying to keep it as low as possible. So once I have this for this one, I'm just going to join it because I know it's going to be fully blue. So then I'm going to push it to the top. I'm looking at that thing and I'm thinking cupcakes. Yeah, basically. I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to push it just a little bit right here because right now I'm thinking like, okay, so for this front side, basically I'm fairly done, but behind here I haven't done anything. So right now I'm just trying to focus like, okay, so once I have this, like what can I do to the other side while I'm working to the front side? So I know like right here, I don't have anything. So maybe I'm thinking like there's some kind of a graffiti or some element or maybe some pipes connected to the wall. So before I do that, I'm just trying to finish like this part right here. So what I'm going to do is just select all of these faces. Okay, and then I'm just going to fill them and separate that selection. So going back here, like I know that, um, yeah, there we go. So going back here, I know that like I made that parchment of a wall, so I need to push it back. But to do it correctly, I have to go back to the front view and wireframe mode. 
and just zoom in and try to find that edge as it's barely touching it. Because right now, what I'm planning to do with this is because I already have like the edge loops that I already have. Oops, it's lagging again. Uh, can you guys, oh yeah, it's back. It's constantly lagging for me. I don't know if it's like the same for you guys, but while I model, like it starts to lag a lot. Right. I don't notice too much. I mean, it looks okay. Ah, okay. So now that I have this one, I'm just going to grab it because I already have it as a separate selection. I'm gonna say, go to uh, make this as a center of the mass and I'm gonna scale it in. Push it back to the side and scale it out, but make sure that you're in wireframe mode so it's barely touching the edge that we're trying to avoid. Right. Scale. So once I have this, I know like I want to have that wireframe look of the windows because like maybe it's like they have a child and they're trying to protect it and whatnot. So then I'm going to use again the wireframe modifier and already like I don't need to worry about anything else. Just apply the modifier and that's it. So then what I can do is like thinking, okay, so I know like for the top part, they have like some kind of a rooftop because a lot of people like are training their clothes on their roof. So I'm thinking, okay, so like right now, I'm just going to stretch it out like this, scale it down, maybe push it out just a little bit like so, and actually let me hide the rest of the scene. Yeah, there we go. So, wait, did I? Ah, there we go. I hope, oh yeah, it's lagging a lot. Okay, grab this thing, push it back here and hide this and there we go okay going back so i know that i have to make like some kind of a structure that's going to hold this thing to the top so right now i'm thinking okay so i have to add a cube have to stretch it down go back to the front view and all this time just i'm just playing with primitives i'm not trying to do something complex i'm just trying to modify a basic cube and add as much elements to it as possible before uh, adding like uh, textures to it. And then once I have it, like I'll think of like, okay, so how can I take this basic, basic shape and just uh, create something unique with it? So right now I'm just doing like extrusions, loop cuts, extrusions, loop cuts, and that's it basically. So now that I have this, I'm just going to scale it down because it's a bit too big. And then I'm going to go back to edit mode, select the lower part, go back to front view and push it down so it's touching the floor like so. And I know this one needs to be pushed up just a little bit. So there we have like one of the sides for the building. For this lower parts, like I'm not worried yet of what I'm going to add because I know like the focus is in the scene it's going to look something like this so I'm not kind of worried like how many details to add below this so uh going to the other side like I know that I already made like some of these assets so I'm gonna go like okay so now I'm gonna use you I'm gonna say object mirror to the x-axis sorry not x to the y-axis yeah, there we go. So I'm going to say like, okay, I know that uh, the AC unit is at the same window. So for this one, uh, I'm going to say like, okay, let's push it up and in the center somewhere, but not the actual center because I want to have like some random mess to the building. So once I have this, like I'll say, okay, so I'm going to reuse you as well. Say, okay, object your y axis and right now it's like flipped so i have to do this manually with the rotation so minus 180 and 
Then I'm going to go back to the back view, push it down just below the window because, or maybe above it. So I'm thinking like, okay, I don't want the AC unit to get wet. So left side, push it to the side. So right now I have like the basic look of the building of what I'm trying to do. And right now I can start like exploring with materials. So uh, in object mode, like I'll go like and say, okay, so now let's create a new material. And for the materials that I'm going to use is based on this site right here. Just give me a sec and let me open it. So for uh, this site, I'm going to use uh, CEO textures. Uh, can you see my screen from the website? Hello? Yes. Ah, okay, perfect. I was shaking my hand, my head. <laughs> yeah. Ah, okay. So once you go to the website, like you can go to assets and you already have like free PBR textures that you can use. So right now I've downloaded a bunch of them. So without you me seeing the same process of downloading, importing and downloading, importing, I'm going to show you like how to connect some of these materials. So uh, going back to the scene, uh, I'm going to start like with the material. So for this one, I'm going to name it like a base or sorry, floor one. And for this one, like I'll go and say, um, okay, so which material should I use? Um, maybe this one. So I'm thinking like, okay. I'm back so in one second, guys. Yeah, okay. So for this one, I'm thinking like, okay, so maybe like this one will be a yellow building. But right now, like you can see, because I don't have any UVs, I'm thinking, okay, so how can I fix this process without me like going and just like, okay, mark the same, sorry, and try to re-UV the whole thing. Because it's a box, like I can easily go to UV, to projection, boom, done. Like you already have the texture set it up. The only thing that you have to do is just connect the maps to it right now. So. Uh, going back to the textures that I have, I'm just going to drag and drop all of the materials. And sorry if you cannot see my screen because I have to manually switch between every single time that I'm doing this. So uh, after I have that, I'm going to take like the displacement map, going back to the scene. So now that I have the displacement map, if I connect it right now, like it's going to give me a somewhat of a displacement, but right now I don't have control of how displaced it's going to look. So by adding a vector displacement, I can basically control the scale of the displacement. So right now, like 0 0.02 works really, really good. So after I have that, like, okay, now I can go to the same thing, like UV, cube, that's it. Create a new material, name it like rust. And then I'm gonna go in and Mm, find some rest material to it. So metallic like this, connect it to the base. It's already looking rusty and I'm just going to tone down the specular because I don't need it that high. All right, just a little bit, yeah, like so. And then I'm going to add the displacement to it. Again, connecting it to the displacement, it's going to be very rough. So what I'm going to do is just add a vector displacement and then I'm going to control like the scale of it. And right now, as you can see, like I'm not controlling or adding maps to the roughness or ambient inclusion yet, because currently I'm trying to visualize how the asset will look like before I finalize all of the maps. Before I do that, because it will be much easier for me in the scene to control like uh, how too easy to change the material rather than just disconnecting and connecting every single material every single time. So once I have this one already, as you can see, like he added uh, a normal map, I don't need it. Like I'm just going to go in, find some random texture. So maybe something like this, which is going to be like a tiled roughness or something like that. Yeah. And then I'm thinking like, okay, so this thing is like very tight and I know like this is like a plane of metal. So what I can do is uh, add the mapping and the texture coordinate. And I'm going to say like, look, man, I want this thing to be stretched. So I'm just going to pull it out. So it has that randomness. 
And then what I can do to this is, okay, so let's say now I need the displacement for the material. So what I can do is just drag it in, make sure that the vector is connected to the vector of that material, because this way, if I connect, uh, so let me show you, if I disconnect like the vector, it's not going to have the same map of the displacement. Even if I add like the vector uh, displacement right now, and if I tone it down, like right now you'll see that, okay, so it's not matching. So in order to fix this, you have to connect the vector to the vector of the image. And right now the displacement is going to be matching the shape that we ordered from the image. So for this one, like again, same process, just Q projections. And I'm not worried like how the UV is going to look like. The end goal of this is like to produce like a concept where I can easily paint it on top later on. So once I have this, like I know I can reuse the same material because it's going to be so fairly small to this thing that it could be very visible. So I'm just going to name it Rusty Metal O2. This one was Rusty Metal yeah, yeah, go for it. Um, okay. So someone asked, uh, why do you don't use Node Wrangler to set up the materials? Uh, the reason why I don't set it uh, is because of the tutorial. It's going to be like for people who basically start out in Blender. And the reason like I started with the basic and I installed it freshly so I can show people like who have no idea of like how to do the basic things of uh, placing textures and whatnot. So I already started like using the node Wrangler for the texture coordinates to set up like the UV, but I'm not going to use the generated form from what I have. So I'm basically trying to, uh, to kind of ease up the process without you like going like, okay, so how do I enable this? How do I disable that and okay. whatnot? Yeah. That's good, good. And then someone else asked, uh, don't you need subdivision for displacement in Blender? Uh, you basically, well, okay, so here's the thing. Uh, the reason why I added these edge loops is to help the geometry import the information for the displacement. So right now already you can see like with little what I have, I already have displacement, but it's not looking like fairly sharp. So that's yeah. why I mentioned, like, I'm not worried too much about the geometry right now. I'm just trying to visualize how will the asset look like before I continue to the finalized visual visualization. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Thank you. No problem. So, and already, like, as you see, like, uh, as I apply this material, already you can see, like, it added everything to the all of the planes that we've created. And right now, okay, so I'm going to say, oh, this one is, like, to up, so I'm going to push it down. And yeah, why not? Like uh, metal rust one, oops, metal rust one. Yeah, already. So now I have that and I'm, I'm thinking like, okay, so for this second floor, uh, I'm going to create another material but of seeing from what the favelas look like and going back to the references images, like you'll see that every single floor of these buildings tend to be very different. Like they don't have any type of connection, like maybe one or two floors like look the same, but still like every single floor has different type of material and look like fairly new or in the mid of construction or I don't know, like it, it's a complete chaos. So you're trying to find a way on, okay, so how can I replicate something similar to that? So once I have that, like I know like for the second floor, uh, my plan is like to basically say, okay, so for this one, it's going to be a bit brighter. So maybe a white wall thinking like, okay, so after I connect it, like it's going to look like this, but then again, I have to do a Q projection. Now it's fixed and going back now, I have to go in and use the displacement map. So I'm just going to connect it again and add the vector displacement to control how thick will the, yeah? Nola, we, all, we still see the image right now. Oh, you still see, oh, yeah. sorry, my bad. Just, just telling you. Jason, your audio seems to be gone or like super, super low. Yeah. What, what's the, what do you mean? Uh, your audio is too low. Can you see my screen now? Oh, yes. oh Blender? Okay, perfect. So uh, now that I have this, like, let me right, do this. Okay, there we go. 
So I'm going to do the same process again. Um, for this one, like I'm thinking maybe a white wall. So I'm just grabbing the same plaster materials that I've been using from CO Textures. Nicola, quick question. Are you mm -hmm. at the moment visualizing things in EV or in... Uh... EV. Yeah, currently mm -hmm. I'm in EV. Uh, the reason why I'm in EV and not Cycles is for me to easier control uh, the look and just freely roam around the scene without me waiting for it to be built. You so, want to quickly explain to those watching from home okay. what's the difference? Okay, so EV is a real-time render. Uh, basically, what it does, it takes real-time information. It's not fairly accurate to the ray tracing, but it's helping you visualize kind of like what Unreal is doing, but it's more simplified. While Cycles is a ray tracer, so if you've been using, like, let's say, V-Ray, Redshift, or whatnot, it's like a ray tracing software, uh, ray tracing renderer, which is trying to accurately calculate the, uh, the real time, uh, sorry, not real time, but the ray trace bounces of the scene with using the, like the source light. So the reason why I'm working in EV and not cycles when I start, it's for me to easily like rotate, like so, like it can easily go back here, like do some changes, zoom in and zoom out without it being built. But looking through cycles, like, look, it's going to like, it's taking some time and it's already like slowing down my computer. And I don't want that. I'm keeping Eevee like as a final thing when I have to render the scene because like if I do it in Eevee, I'm not gonna get the accurate result or information that I'm looking for. So yeah, currently I'm working in Eevee. And for those who don't know, Eevee stands for e very fast rendering. Basically. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm going to connect this again to the displacement. So point zero two, and now I'm thinking, okay, so now because I already have this yellow material, I'm gonna name this like floor two. Uh, for floor O3, I'm thinking like, okay, so I'm gonna reuse the same material from floor O1 and just use cube projection. And right now I'm thinking, okay, so how can I change this with already what I have? And one way to do it is just like, make sure that you duplicate the material and just rename it just in case. And let's add a hue and saturation because I already have like a really cool base with the displacement and everything. What I can do right now is just like tone down the saturation. And what I can do is like, okay, let's use the hue and saturation and to change the color of the top part of the building. So once I have that, like, okay, so I know like the top part right here, it's going to have the same material, UV cube. And I'm going to apply like floor 03. And already like you can see it's connected. So right now that I have the basic materials to it, oh, I actually forgot to uh, do this thing. So UV cube and apply rust metal to it, like so. So right now that uh, once I have like the basic things now, I'm thinking, okay, so I know like I have to do the windows and the uh, AC units and whatnot. So I'll just start with the windows. I'll just grab and select every single window that I have in the scene. I'll just train them. And in the material properties, I'll just create a new material. And where it says surface, I'm going to uh, ch uh, change this to glass. And already, like you can see, I have glass, but the reason it's not working is because I have a duplicate modifier. So, uh, control C, control C, control C. Is it joint? Yeah. So, I need to go back like a few steps. Oh, no. <laughs> it's crashed. No. Wait, wait. Um, commercial break. <laughs> commercial break, basically, yeah. Uh, just a sec, let me try and recover it. I thought so, crashed. apparently, it crashes on stream. And Ian, my friend, is currently laughing his ass out because I told him like multiple times Blender doesn't crash. <laughs> sure. Thanks, Ian. <laughs> Jason, your audio is almost gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you not hear me? My... Yeah, it's weird. It's dropped down. I'm just going to unplug it and plug it back in. Hold on. Okay. Can you see me right now? Yes. Okay, there we go. Ooh, thank God. 
But wait, hold on. Uh, so you have an autosave in Blender that other software don't really have. This is amazing, right? It doesn't matter. It crashed. Okay, Blender is still good. Yeah, so actually, I... that's one of the good things that Blender sometimes saves your ass, unlike Maya. Yeah. So, like, I'm just going to continue back, like, uh, uh, reapply the materials. So, Russ right here. Uh, going okay, back to the audio now? Preview. It uh, it's, like, uh, you're still low. It's really strange. I don't know why. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, before you continue and don't make the mistake that I did, make sure that all of your modifiers are applied. So, I'm just going to click apply. Okay, so for that one, I don't have any. So I'm just going to select this. I'm just going to right click and join them. And then into material, again, let's try this. Change this to class. And already now I have class. I don't want any roughness to it. So I'm gonna tone down the roughness. And to add a little bit of flair to this, what I can do is just like connect a glossy shader and add a mix shader connected to it and right now like i can have like a reflection type of looking at the window so it's not too fairly bright i'm just going to tone it down like so and another thing that i can do is like grab all of the window frames that i have so this one for example i need to separate the loose parts so okay so separate selection for this one as well separate the selection so now i'm going to select these windows right here join them and this one right here i'm just going to separate this selection and separate this selection so right now i'm just going to join these two and I'm going to join this to like so. Perfect. So once I have this thing, uh, what I can do is like, okay, so that thing, I'm going to separate this one. So separate loose parts. There we go. Okay, so for this ones right here, for these frames, I'm just gonna say, okay, so I don't need this material this, because it's like a window frame. And I'm thinking like, okay, so I can join in these two together like so. And for this one's like, yeah, I don't need the material here as well. So I'm just going to join them in. And what I can do is just like apply a basic material, a basic color, just so I can think like, okay, so the window frames doesn't necessarily need to be like fairly white, but I'm thinking like maybe a bluish color like so, and I'm just going to turn down the specular and increase the roughness, maybe darken the color, like so. And another thing to do like right now is just like, because I already have this material in roughness and I'm thinking like, okay, so for this one, I don't want to create another rough material. What I can do is just reuse the floor two material for the antenna. But what I can do is disconnect the displacement to it, oops. Don't crash. All right, there we go. So I'm, what I'm going to do is just duplicate it and disconnect the displacement. And because I don't need it, and for here, what I can do is just add a hue and saturation and tone down the saturation to point to so it's a bit darker. And for this thing, I'm just going to rust metal. Like that's it, like a basic color. And then what I'm going to do for this one is just like create a new material and for this uv process again i'm going to do the uv and cube thing but here what i'm going to do is like grab like an image from an ac unit and like it's a random image from the internet like it doesn't need to be something that you find like fairly complex or high risk image you can just use like any random image of it just they are like like this, you see? And then if I go to the UV editing process, like I'll say, okay, so select the front face, grab it in the UV editor, make sure that you're in the UV editor and just scale it down, push it in. And you can also go here into the render preview so you can see what you're basically doing. So I'm gonna do it like here. 
stretch it out just a little bit like so. Then I'm going to go to the other side. And for this one, I'm just going to, okay, so scale it in. I don't need any information here. Same goes for this one, like so. And from the other side, like I'm thinking, okay, so I'm gonna scale it down, add this thing to the side. And for the bottom one, just scale it down with like this. So there we have like an AC unit. So now that I have it, like right now, because I duplicate the empty cube, what I can do is just like, okay, so this material should be named uh, AC. I'm just going to go back here, type in AC, click on it and make sure that you're in UV cube projection. And for some reason it doesn't work on stream. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just going to duplicate the same thing and rotate it by minus 180. Yeah, there we go. And just bring it back into a position. So uh, even with EV, like right now, as you can see, like uh, the shadows are not doing well. Uh, and that's one problem with EV right now. It's like, you cannot do high quality shadows. Like, especially like when you connect an HDR from my experience, like, because you have all that information from the light source of the image, like it doesn't tend to be high quality. So uh, the reason why I'm working in EV is just like, so I can visualize this process of what I'm having right now. So then what I can do is just for this one, again, rust. And you can see me like going back and forth between materials because I'm trying to limit myself to be like four to five materials per building. Because like, even though they're favelas, like they have the same uh, basic, like destructive look to it. The only thing that changes is like the material, but one thing to, uh, one thing to like make it different is just like by adding different color, maybe changing the displacement of it. And that's fairly easy to do. Just like disconnect this displacement, make sure that you duplicate the material and that's it basically. So, Going back to this thing, like UV cube, another rust. And for this one, I know it's going to be that bluish color. So the window frames are uh, just named blue. So I'm just going to add that blue color to it. Perfect. So once I have this, what I'm thinking, okay, so now that I have like one of these sides, like right here, maybe like for this one right here. Uh, okay, so I'm going to select this face and separate the selection for this one as well. And say like, okay, so for this one, like it doesn't need to have a window, it should be like an empty hole. But for this one, I'm just going to remove it and make it white. Maybe go back to solid view and just join them now together. Oops, not join them, but yeah, just make sure that the origin point is set to the mass of surface. So right now I can just go in and rotate it and make it look like it's an open window. And even though it's not fairly correct, like because you're just concepting, like you can just warp the shape and do what you want, like with it. Just make sure, like when you render, like it's not visible like this, because like people know, oh yeah, it's just a cutout. Like it doesn't look like that in real life. So now that I have this, like going back to this side, because I already have the material, uh, I can say like, okay, so now I just want to have like another window right here. Then I'm just going to separate this selection, grab it, grab all of the edges, make sure that you dissolve this edge. And then I'm going to make like this one as a fairly large window. And right now, like you'll see that I already have the material downstairs and I'm not worried about it too much right now uh, because uh, the thing is like the reason why I did it as a cube is for me to be easier to visualize because in the end, like I'm a concept artist, like it's not my job to think uh, like very technical, but rather just to have the visual information from the start. So once I have this window, I'm just going to go back and like redo stuff constantly, like going back and forth to them, 
giving a lot of depth to the geometry shape that I have. So I'm going to separate this one. Again, going back to the back view. Why? Okay, so I'm going to separate that selection. And right now, like if I go back to the render preview, yeah, it's the material of the wall because I don't want that. I'm just going to join these two and find the glass material. So um, material O2. Yeah, there we go. Oh, no, it's not that one. Uh, it's material. God damn it. Material 3D asset, glass. So I'm just name it glass. So for the window frames, like I want to have like that dirty look to it. And right now, like you can see that already some edges is like starting to crack and whatnot. So what I'm going to say like, okay, so this one will be the window tone, but what I can do is change the saturation to zero and increase the value to two. Now I have that old type of window look, look that I wanted. But what I can do is just decrease the displacement to 0 0.01 and just grab it all, Q projection, and continue. And for this wall, like I'm just going to select one of the sides, not all of the sides. And I'm just going to UV, Q projection, so it's now fixed. And I don't have to worry like too much with the UVing uh, right now. Uh, I mean, I won't worry at all with it because uh, UVing is like the most annoying process for me. And as a concept artist, I'm just trying to think like, how can I make my life easier while I'm doing this? So I'm just trying to apply like basic materials and whatnot. So once I'm satisfied, like with this look, what I can do is say like, okay, so this looks good. Make sure that you save this in and what I can add like more elements to this, like maybe some hanging clothes in the inside. So what I can do is let me first grab all of these cubes that I've made and push them in into our, oops, into our group. Oh, it's already, oh, like that. Like that, ah, okay, there we go. Okay, so what I can do right now is like create the hanging clothes for inside of the building. And I know that this will be assets that will be barely seen into the scene, but I want to have like that small detail into the, uh, the whole building thing. So what I can do is just like grab a Bezier curve, rotate it by 90 degrees, like go to the front view, then just press tab, grab one of those edges and because like it's a fairly thin line, I don't know if you can see it, I'm gonna zoom in more. So I'm just trying to do like a basic curve to it. And once I have it, uh, I'm gonna go to the uh, properties or the option dot properties. And what I'm going to do is go to the geometry and where it says that I'm just going to add it like to 0 0.002, so it's fairly thin. And once I'm satisfied with it, like this is currently not geometry, but a curve. So in order to convert this to geometry, we have to go to object, or convert to a mesh. And right now you can see like it has geometry, but it looks very like low poly. So to fix this, I'm just going to add a subdivision surface modifier and just apply it. And I don't worry too much about the, the poly count on it. Because like it's a fairly small material, I'm just going to go in and just apply like a basic black color to it and increase the uh, saturation. So then I'm going to go back to the object that I've created and grab the Bezier curve, push it out. And I'm going to scale it out so you can guys see better what I'm trying to do. So once I have this, like I'm thinking like, okay, so how can I make hanging clothes without me like modeling t-shirts and whatnot? What I can basically do right now is just like take one plane, go to top view and make sure that you're in wireframe mode and make sure that the center is like matching the line that we've created for like the rope thing. So I'm going to do is like trying to squeeze in the shape add a few subdivisions, like maybe three and four. And what I'm going to do is just shades with the plane. So in order for me to simulate this, I can go to the uh, simulation properties tab, 
so sorry to the physics tab and like i'm gonna say okay so you're going to be close and you're going to be the collision and if i go now to the timeline like you'll see that it's starting to simulate and i'm just going to give it like randomness to it so it's like destroying the shape but right now it's not looking fairly good so what i can do is like go back and increase the subdivisions to it and then i'll try again so maybe it's going to look like something like this so once i'm satisfied with the look of this thing even though it's like going inside of it i'm going to fix it later i'm going to go back to the modifier tab and just click okay apply i'm satisfied with the shape same goes with the collision apply the collision so right now, once I have this basic shape, even though like right now, as you see it, like it's fairly huge and it looks like shit, basically, what you can do is just like try to duplicate it, maybe rotate it just a little bit. So it's kind of variating. So I'm going to do it again and scale it down. Oops. Like so. So now I have like three maybe shirts or blankets or whatnot. So what I'm going to do is go back to the shader tab and like say apply the blue color, uh, duplicate it and call this one red, change the color to red. For this one, I'm going to add the blue one. And for this one, like I'll create a new one and like make it. I don't know, for pink or whatnot, and call it pink. So then I'm going to grab all of the things, join them together, and just push it in and scale it down. And then I'm going to go to the front view, push it up and to the left side, push it out. So it's like on the window thing like right here and i can do it like okay i'm going to duplicate you rotate you and maybe minus 180 like so but what i can do right now is like because i already have them joined i'm gonna say okay uh add me a new material to this i'm gonna create a new material and change the color to be maybe um green like yellowish green, and I'm gonna say, okay, so remove the pink material. So remove the pink, remove the reds. Oops, just a sec. Oh, sorry to lag again. Okay, so I'm going to separate them. Yeah, okay, separate the by loose parts all right there we go so i'm gonna say like okay to this one i'm gonna add like a new material maybe change the color to be slightly white and increase the color to it for this one i'm going to keep the blue one i'll make sure to rename it white for this one i'm just going to darken the blue one and it's already like you can see that it's darkening like every single one that i have and I don't want that, so I'm just going to push it up just a little bit, duplicate it, and then darken it. Nicola, I was uh, mm -hmm. looking for the right moment to ask your question, but okay, uh, are, uh, are you in a relationship at the moment? No, nah, man. Because somebody said, "I love you, Nicola. I want to have kids with you." Uh, you know, that's, maybe dinner. That's my boy, and that's my boy. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So once you have like all of the setup for the scene, uh, like the blankets and whatnot, what it's going to be used, what we can do is like duplicate everything that we've done here. Just make sure that you connect the wire thing again with the material. So I'm just going to join them together, grab them and going back to the scene. Okay, so I'm just going to duplicate it and push them up. Just scale it in. Yeah. So I'm just trying to like visualize it. I'm not trying to do like something. Okay, yeah, it's not accurate. Like I'm not worried about that. I'm trying to figure 
like a scene where I can uh, create something out of it. Uh, push it back, left, scale it out. And right now, like once I have this, like I'm thinking, okay, so how can I start like photo bashing inside, um, inside Blender? And one way to do it is by using decals. So I'm gonna show you like a quick technique. So what I'm going to do is before you do this, make sure that you go to the preferences, add-ons and type in Im images as planes because I have it enabled right now, like I cannot show it. But if you go to import images as planes, uh, I'm gonna try to find like the decal. So decal, uh, maybe number five. And if I scale it out, like decals are basically like images that you can create or extract and one fast way to do decals inside Photoshop, and I'll show you this thing really quickly, is how I actually approach this thing as, okay, start this thing. I hope that it's not fairly confusing to anyone what I've been showing, but I've been talking like really fast. So if you guys need explanation of something or for me to go back to something, like, please tell me. So, um, okay, open this one. Ah, yeah, okay, there we go. So right now in Photoshop, uh, I've opened one of the screens that, oh, sorry, one of the materials that I've been, been using like as a display, uh, as a displacement or as a color. So what I can do like fairly easy to create like a decal out of this is like go to select color range, just select random color delete the color, save it as a PNG, and that's it. That's all you have to do. And once you have it as a PNG, what you can do is going back to Blender is, uh, okay, can you see my Blender skin again, uh, screen again? Let me check. Yeah, okay. So once you import it back, like you'll see it like this and it's transparent, like you don't have to worry about anything. And what I'm thinking, okay, so, how can I slap this thing on the wall? So I'm thinking like maybe it's going to be like somewhere here around the sides. So I'm gonna go back, change the rotation to 90, then 90 again, maybe another four degrees, so zero, okay. So once I have it like this, what I can do is just increase the subdivisions so make sure that you increase the subdivisions for this to work properly. And once you have it into position, make sure that the scale, it's fairly matching to uh, the position that we're using right now. So what you can do is go to add modifier, add a shrink wrap, target, it's going to be the lower cube. And right now already you can see it being added, but it, it's adding like this weird distortion to it. So in order to fix this, just uh, make sure the offset is 0 0.001. And already like I can go in and like, oh, there you go, it's perfect. So I'm trying to think like, okay, so maybe this wall like was part of the white one, but as they were like trying to fix it, like, yeah, they got tired like and they left it as it is. So I'm thinking like maybe we can add some dirt points to this. So again, I'm just adding another, another image as plain. Decal, decal number two. So these ones are basically like Photoshop brushes that I'm using. Like these are, this is just like a random Photoshop brush. Like I added to the edge, like maybe this is going to be like the dirt on the top part. So again, like add a few subdivisions, add a shrink wrap modifier and make sure the target is like the basic cube downstairs. And I'm thinking, okay, so now I can stretch it. And at any point of time, like if I'm not satisfied with this material that I've added, and maybe I'm thinking, oh, can I reuse like this thing? So I'm just going to do, uh, I'm going to duplicate it, go back to the first thing, control V, and just connect the alpha and connect it to the alpha as well. And there you go, like it's already adding the same thing. 
the that's the beauty part about like using decals it's like you can fairly easily connect from images to planes and change like the information right away without you like having to go back and forth in photoshop and like trying to photo bash and whatnot so again make sure that the uh, offset is 0 0.001 and already like as i'm having i'm starting to build out like the look of the building but right now I'm, as i'm thinking like okay so now i have like this building looking the same on each side how can i reutilize this asset where i can go in and say like okay so if I can use this asset multiple times in a scene without with a different rooftop, I can basically go and say like, okay, so right now with what I have with the Brazier curves, I'm going to just train them in, push it into the group. And what I can do is, okay, let me remove some things from the scene. Okay, I don't need this thing anymore. Oh, just a sec. Uh, okay, there we go. So now I'm thinking like, okay, so now that I have like one part of the building finished, like how can I design something on the side? So I'm thinking like maybe like this wall like was in the middle of a construction. So this one was like left as like, oops, control Z. Ah, there we go. Okay, so now I'm going to select like this part and say like, okay, so add me a new material. I'm going to add like that material that is like a destroyed wall. So I'm gonna say apply this or well, rather like a wall in the middle of extraction and say like, okay, so I know like this walls have like those molds that make sure that the wall is like connected between the pole and like the base of it. So I'm thinking, okay, so now I have to add another decal. Oops. So I'm going to do this decal right here. Rotate it by 90 degrees. And then rotate it on another 90 degrees. So again, I'm going back here, pushing it up. Make sure to subdivide it a few times and scale it down so it's matching fairly the look of the building. So then I'm going to add another shrink wrap modifier. Okay. Target, scale it up, and make sure that the offset is 0 0.001. And now like I can add it to the sides, duplicate it again, move it to the side again. So it's like looking like it's connected to this wall while it was painted, but it's not fairly finished. And right here, like, because I joined these two materials together, what I can do is like, okay, so this is a separate selection and this one is a separate selection as well. So the windows, I can join them in and remove the material. So now I have like that look. Uh, then what I can do is like thinking, okay, so maybe we can add like some graffiti back here. And what I can do is go back to the shader tab, to the world, and maybe rotate this by, I don't know, like 70, 60. Yeah. Okay. So we can see it like this. And like, I'm going to add another decal here, but what I'm going to do is uh, reapply the same material that I've been using here. So uh, going back, like grabbing all of the faces, add a new material to the group, apply the material that I've imported. And then I'm going to say assign. And then what I can do to this is like, okay, so now I'm going to import images as planes, find like a decal of a graffiti. And for this one, like you can randomly like typing something in Photoshop and like, don't worry too much about it. Like it, should, it can be random text. So once you have it like subdivided, and then add a shrink wrap modifier and connect it to the wall. So I'm just going to push it up, push it here and maybe scale it down and make it 0 0.001, oops. 
Okay, 0 0.01. All right. There we go. Uh, make sure that like that you uh, add the offset like 0 0.001 on, or 0 0.01. It depends like where you're placing it. It sometimes like doesn't work properly, but adding another decimal to it, it's going to fix the problem. So uh, now that I have this, like I'm thinking, okay, so uh, seeing from the reference images and going back to them, a lot of these windows, like they have like some kind of a protection to them, like seeing right here, like it, either they have like a borderlines or like, I don't know how you call these things. So I'm thinking, okay, so maybe some of the windows that we have in our scene can have that thing. So going back to the asset, like I'm thinking, okay, so maybe this windows back here need that thing. So I'm just going to grab two edges, fill them in, and I'm going to separate that selection. And what I can do is just extrude it out, add few loop cuts, and just add wireframe modifier and make sure that this one is point, point zero 0.02. Yeah, like so. And maybe 0 0.02 is too much, so I'm just going to hold shift and drag it out. And for this one, I'm going to say like, this is rust material. So I'm gonna leave it like that. And once I'm satisfied with it, I'll just click apply. And I'm not worrying like too much uh, about like, is the geometry correct? Or is like, it's causing issues with the UVs. Like, as I said, in the scene, like these assets like will be fairly small. So, Going back to the other windows, like maybe this one uh, can have like the same thing. So I'm just going to separate the selection, shift D, extrude out. And then what I can do is say again, wireframe modifier. And there we go. So now I'm going to remove the glass material and apply uh, frost material. And there we have it. So now that I have like basic elements to the scene, uh, what I can do is like try to randomize some things. So uh, here is where I'll just start to uh, duplicate the scene and I'll call this one like uh, buildings, building, building procedural. And right now what I'm going to do is like delete everything except for the building that I'm currently having. Yeah, there we go. So going to grab all of the hierarchies. So select all of the hierarchies, delete the hierarchy. And for this ones, I'm gonna say, okay, so this right here is going to be like the first floor. So this one needs to be connected together. Um, oops, this one needs to be pushed back. Um, where is it? Ah, there we go. So I'm going to apply it. So these ones are joined in together, like so. There we go. Okay, so for these two parts, like I know I'll have to connect like this windows right here and this ones, but I don't want to worry too much about it like uh, before I start. So uh, what I can do is like going back to the collection, I'm going to it's select, locked. yes? One quick question. Where mm -hmm. did you get the red brick material? And also um, some, somebody's asking, yeah. is it Photoshop or CC? CC 17, 17. It's CC 17. What is this? Uh, for Photoshop? Yeah. Oh no, uh, CC 17 that I'm using. What is, ah, uh, the version of The Photoshop. version, yeah, the version, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. CC yeah. 17, yeah. where are we now? Uh, 21, I think. Okay. I'm not sure. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. I think he's somebody, if it was from the texture 
uh, website that you were using before. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, this is not from CC17. This is basically like an image that I found from the assets that you're going to see given to the challenge. And I basically extracted it and just used uh, a clone tool to duplicate it and basically create the material for this thing. What was the name of that texture, uh, as, uh, the texture uh, resource? Uh, uh, it's COO textures. C O zero. I think this is what uh, DMP meant. I think so too. Was a texture yeah. from the web. C O O textures. Yeah, C O zero textures. That's are they free textures yeah. or? Yeah, they're free PBR textures that you I'm can gonna, use at any time. I'm gonna drop it in the in the description afterwards so people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically the slab that I've created right here, uh, what I did is basically take this this material right here and just with a mask tool in Photoshop, like I masked it out and just save it as, saved it as a, a PNG. And that's it. So right now I'm going to do separate little parts, UV the cube. And now I have this. So now I'm going back and like saying, okay, so this is going to be like floor one. So I'm starting to make like new collections. So this one is going to be like building uh, floor zero one. <clears throat> then I'm going to make a new one, call it, oops, not inside, but outside building, building floor zero two. And I'll start to drag and drop like assets into it. So I know like this one was like floor zero one, drag it in. This one is going to be floor zero two. Zero two. All right, and drag it into floor two. And right now what I'm going to do is hide basically the previous group. And currently what, what I have is I'm gonna say, okay, so with all of the decals that I've been using, like I'm thinking, okay, so how can I create variations to the second floor? So I'm basically going to duplicate it, rename it floor 0 to that, uh, that zero 01. And I'm just going to start applying like different materials. So going back to this one i'm just going to go and say like okay so i don't want floor material this one to be i just want like floor three maybe and just keep like this, this material to the side but maybe i'll reapply it right here like so and what i'm thinking okay so now i can duplicate it again and like this one is going to be zero two and I'm thinking like, okay, so the first one, I'm going to add like a different material. So maybe, uh, so material of floor 02 again, oops. Yeah, there we go. And for this one, I'm gonna say like, okay, so maybe on this side, like I'll change like the windows, but I don't want to have windows to the back side. And maybe like for this one, it's going to have only like one window. So I'm trying to like, well, here's the process where I'm thinking like, okay, so how can I like clean up the geometry that I already made to make like something different? So I'm thinking like, okay, so I don't need these things. So delete those faces, delete the faces, delete the face. There we go. All oh, right, is the duplicate. So I need to hide it like this. So I'm just going to duplicate it like this, delete those faces, fill it in. So I'm just going to leave those windows on the side. And uh, right now I'm thinking, okay, so now once I have like these duplicates that I've created, like I know like right now for this one, for uh, floor number two and floor number one, uh, I know that I'll think like of something like maybe there should be like one giant window to the left side. Oops. Uh, just connect it in. Then I'm going to separate the selection. And uh, then what I'm going to do is hide. Yeah, there we go. So I'm just going to go to the left side, add again like one window 
extrude it in. Then I'm going to separate this selection. And I'm just going to add like material to the glass and remove this material for the second one. So this one is all together. So I need to join it in like so. So for this one, I'm done. So for the second one, I'm just gonna have to, oops. Yeah, join this together. For the second one, I'm thinking like, okay, so maybe there's like another balcony here. So I'm, what I'm going to do is just like fill in the faces. So this to connect and this to connect, just extrude them in. Like so, then push it down. Oops, control C. C. There. To C, like so. So maybe it's like a small time window, and I'm just going to separate these two, make them look like another window. So I'm going to say, like, okay. You two are going to be extruded out, separate the selection, apply a glass material to this. So, well, zero, zero, 001, where was it? Here we go. This one is like random blue material. So now like if I go back to render preview, like you'll see if I rotate the HDR, like this side is going to look like fairly bad, like especially in the inside. So what I'm going to do is go to the left side, grab everything from this side, both of them, and then I'm going to say UV to projection and it's going to be fixed. So once I have this too, like I'll say, okay, so this is like my window part. These two, these three, sorry, need to be joined together. And already you can see, like, I'm not adding windows to any of this. Like, I'm keeping it fairly blank because I want to find a process where I can just easily go back and get back some of the windows that we already had. So I'm just going to fill in some of these holes and maybe, like, uh, from this side, like, okay, so let's say, like, there is like one giant window pushed in. So I'm going to separate this selection. Left. Oops. I'm back. Okay, so now I'm going to scale it in. Separate this selection. Again, apply glass. So you can see me like I'm going back and forth constantly between two materials. And uh, that's like the beauty of this thing because I don't want to like worry too much of the design process while I'm starting to scatter all of the information. So going back here, like to the windows, like I'm gonna find and say like, okay, so these are my windows. I'll just join them in together. So join it in. Okay, so that window I accidentally, oh, right. Separate the loose parts. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate it to the side. Chain Y. Okay, oops, left front. Perfect. So now what I can do is just like join this together, join the windows. Now what I'm going to do is go back to the floors and disable everything except for the windows. So it's been much easier for me to select everything. So join this and those together like so. Um, then what I'm going to do is hide again this group. Just I'm just going to grab the windows and push it back to the floor group. And what I'm going to do right now is show you a process where 
I can oof, uh, come on. Uh, this is floor. Uh huh. Okay, there we go. So the floor one. So this is one variation, like with what I have. This one is variation number two. And this one should be variation number three. But I'm going to, for some reason, it's breaking. So excuse me, like I'll have to start this process from uh, the beginning because for some reason it's breaking the geometry. Um, okay, so let me do this by the windows, okay? Mm, uh huh. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is like uh, delete the face. Okay, I'm gonna say to this window, okay, separate the selection. Right here to this face, it's delete the face. Okay, I'm gonna delete, oh sorry, separate the loose parts again. I'm gonna say like this one is going to be just a window and move this one to the side, back. So object set origin to the center of mass surface. Push it out just a little bit and just train it in. So I'm just training it in. Oh, right. Good the face. Okay, so this one will be window one side. So window one. This one is going to be the building floor. So it's going to be here. So one. Uh, sorry, not zero one, zero two. This one is going to be for one. I'm just going to rename them. Sorry for guys taking so long, but for some reason, Blender didn't do the thing that I wanted it to do. So uh, what I'm going to do is just hide everything else from the side, but right here, like this is the decal that I've been using. So right now I'm just going to hide it for now. Uh, I'm just going to say to this like okay so this is like one floor that we have how can i like replicate the whole thing but have variations to it so let's say like because i have like building floor 001 i'm just going to grab it just select everything join it as one mesh and call it floor 02 version 001 um, then what I'm going to do, delete this cube. And then I'm going to do like, okay, so I'm going to duplicate it again, hide the previous one and this one as well. Just move it up like so. And here, what I'm going to do is grab all of the details so they don't bother me in the scene so I can see better what I'm doing. Okay, so once I have this, I'm going to duplicate it Hide the previous one. Okay, so the, to this one, I'm gonna say, okay, so I don't want this material right here. So I'm going to remove all of the materials in the scene from what I have right now to the duplicate. And I'm gonna start like, okay, so now I'm going to separate everything and say like, okay, so for this one, I know that I had like the wireframe window right here and I don't want that. So I'll start like, okay, so this one is going to be like floor three, maybe a yellow color, like so. Then I can add like the white color of the wall. So floor 02, oops. So add a new material. The, to the first one, it's going to be floor 01. To the second one, it's going to be floor 02. O2, assign. And then what I'm going to do is like, okay, so now I have all of the windows right here joined in. So maybe I'll say like, okay, you go to this side, you go to this side. Maybe like 
right here because I don't have any new windows. I'll say like, okay, so I don't want to have like a window to this side. So I'm going to delete this window. I'm gonna say like, okay, so this is, is going to be like a blank wall. Nicola, could you mm -hmm. explain the reason why you're trying to set this up in a procedural way? Uh, okay. What, you, what are the advantages and the disadvantages? Okay, so the advantage of this process is for you like to use the same geometry multiple times with different materials from different angles. So you don't have to bother like modeling a different type of building every single time. So like with this process, it will be much easier for you to set up like, let's say we're doing like small city blocks. Why should I model like different building and different rooftop every single time where I can just model two or three versions of it and then reuse it constantly with different types of materials, which would be much more beneficial for me rather than just going, okay, so now let's do like another building, another building, another building. And it's going to be a painstakingly long process where the collection is going to look fairly big. So this will like you're kind of saving time. It's not like the most like advantage type of thing to do, but when it comes to building like bigger scenes and you're limited to assets that you have time to model, like this is a fairly quick process for you to get a result, especially like when you're doing like concept art or visual development or whatnot. Yeah. So um, what I can do, like, uh, so I said, like, I already have, like, this thing. This is going to be the front side. I don't want this thing. I'm going to reuse the same thing right here, 90 degrees. Oops, uh, zero. So I'm going to push it to the side, and I'm going to say to this, okay, object set origin to the 3D cursor. So now I have, like, radiation number two. So I'm just going to join this one again. So this one is so one ver version two. So now this is like version one. This is like version two. Yeah, so version one, version two. So I'm going to do is like say, okay, so this is going to be like version three. So I'm just going to rename it version zero zero three. And what I can do right now is like, say, uh, for example, like for this ones, I don't want to have like windows to the other side, oops, to the other side, but I'm just going to delete them right here. And then what I'm going to do is like, okay, so this window frame right here, it's not going to be used. So I'm just going to fill it in, fill it in like this, and it's going to be like blank on the other side. For this side, I'm just going to leave the small windows, but for this side, what I'm going to do is like, because we already hide one window, I'm gonna say, okay, so I don't need another window here. So I'm gonna delete one of the windows, fill it in like so, and I'm just going to join what I already have. So right now, as I have this, what I'm going to do is select all of this and enable the process for me to see the other parts. Oops, not that one. So this was building one, collection. Not that collection, building floor one. Okay, there we go. So what I can do right now is like with deleting all of the decals before I continue with the process, I'm gonna say to Blender, okay, so now I want you to take this building floor 02 and generate me like different variations to it. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is add a plane, make sure that it's like matching to the uh, position that the building starts. So the origin point is right here. And then, what I'm going to do is scale it down and go to the uh, uh, particle system, create a new particle system. And I'm just going to say, okay, keep the number at one because we don't need more. Make the source that it's on faces in random order and even distribution. The physics, we don't need physics. So disable the mass and go to render and where it says, halo, change it to collection. 
So back here where it says scale, make sure that it's on one. And where it says collection, what we're going to do now, it's I'm going to hide all of these things right here. So it's like looking like this, empty. And what I'm going to do is grab the plane in a moment, move it to the scene outside. Oops, where did it go? Ah, there we go. So now I'm going to hide the scene uh, collection and I'm going to tell to the collection, like, uh, I don't want any physics, but I want to uh, uh, show the render as a collection and find the collection as building floor O2. So right now, uh, as floor O2 object rotation, rotation scale, and use extra count. And for, wait, why is it? Um, did I mess up something? Oh, no, there it is. So, and this one needs to be at the collection. This one needs to be building floor O2. And for some reason it's not working. The blender got stuck. Okay, let me try and do this. Um, object set origin to the mass of the surface. Okay. Should Maybe you need to input a number that is bigger than one because one, it's probably the one that you're hiding. Mm, maybe like I'll try it just a sec. I'm not sure like why is it not working because it's supposed to have like a preview to it. So, um, so number one, oh, the rotation is messed up. Okay, so object rotation, object, okay. Okay, so the scale is messed up. So we need to have the object rotation, global, global coordinates, and make sure this is on one. So if I place it on two, like it's not giving the results, but if I start increasing, like you'll see the building floor is starting to generate in a different rotation. So I think Blender is bugged. In just a sec, let me. The what if you change the rotation of the collection maybe? I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think of that, but it, that's not the problem. It's It shouldn't supposed to be doing this. It's supposed to like, as I'm matching to the plane, um, maybe change the source from faces to vertices and scale it down. Yeah, it's currently like, it's not supposed to be doing this. 90 degrees. Huh. Strange. Uh, then, well, basically what I was trying to show you is like, uh, if I change the collection from uh, this floor to this one, Ah, there we go. Okay. There we go. So now that I have this, like right here, as you can see now, I have like different variations to it. Now, if I go to render preview, I'll say like, okay, so I don't want to see you. Now I have a different version. I don't want to see you. Now I have a different version to it. So this way, like as you're generating, like you can see different variations to the building floor. Yep, there we go. So now if I press zero, there's nothing. But if I add to the count one and then say like, okay, so now that I have this variation, like I can go easily and duplicate it, go up one floor, hide the previous one. And then I'm going to say like to this one, okay, so add one to this one, but hide me this one. And like when you're duplicating, make sure that you have different types of planes that are not using the same generator. So you have to create a different generator for each floor. So in order for this to work, what I'll have to do is like once I duplicate the plane is to remove the particle system and create a new one and basically reapply the same process. So none, uh, there is no velocity, no physics. 
and just select the group to be collection and make sure that it's collection 02. So the object rotation and scale are matching. And currently it's duplicating the whole thing for some reason. Yeah, there we go. And it's not supposed to be showing me this. So use count zero. Yeah, I'm sorry guys, like for some reason, Blender is not working for me properly today. Um, but yeah, the process was basically that you can use the poly count inside Blender to generate like different types of floors. And like, I'm sorry that it's not working properly and it's like fairly annoying me right now, to be honest. But the reason is like, as you're changing the, uh, the values of the count, like you can go to the uh, number and just like go in and add changes to it. But right now it's not producing like the view that I'm looking for because currently for some reason, I think I'll have to restart Blender for this to work. I hope you don't guys mind what I was trying to show you. I'm so sorry. Yeah, so. I'm gonna start this over again and let's see if that will fix the problem. Um, let's hide that floor. Okay, so I'm just going to grab all of this. Tab, so tab, down, tab, tab down, okay, tab down. Okay, perfect. Let's try this again. So I'll make a new collection, a plane, make sure that I scale it down, add a new particle system, make sure the number is one. So it's like one particle in the center of it, but currently like it's set to faces and it's shattered. I want to have it on grid. And so actually, no, I need to be jittered. And then I'm going to go to mass, Change this to zero, change this to collection. Uh, I need this to be collection floor zero, zero, two with the dot. And then I need the use count. Yeah, scale is one. Yeah, for some reason it's really not working. I don't know how to fix it. Oh my God. Um, anyways, I'll try to produce it this way. Okay, so I'm, I know I'm doing like this the old fashioned way, but I was trying to show you like a procedural process. So um, let me first the, hide all of these things. So, um, let me go to render preview. So this one needs to be glass. Oh, no. Separate by loose parts. Uh, reassign the material to this thing. Assign. And remove this material. So once you have like this thing, the goal was to show you like how you can generate the building floors, but in short term, because Blender is not working properly, I'll show it with the basic cubes. Like, so I'll have like different variations to it. Like this is going to be like material red and duplicate the same thing at like a different color. So, this one will be different color like so. And the goal was to show you like basically when you add a particle system to it with one, that when you change this with no velocity and uh, no physics, when you apply the, the collection and you change the scale to it, we can go back to collection Okay, so this collection, I'm going to drag this down into the scene. Uh, make 
a new collection and call them cubes and drag it in. If I go to the collections and select cubes with the, or with the scale set to uh, one, it should be showing now, but, ah, there we go. So one, two. Okay, so now I need to tighten the scale. Like so, and now in controlling with the collections, now I can go here and the user count and change and add like variations to just make sure that this is on two or actually it's not working. Um, random, it's not random. It should be on vertices. So I'm going to scale it down. Ah, there we go. So zero and then one, and then it's going to be this one. And you basically change the location between the queues between these two. And uh, in order to like fix this for some reason, like I don't know why it's not working, but when you connect the plane to it, it's supposed to generate like different types of floors. So uh, once you have like all of the different buildings set up like for this one as an example, I'm sorry that it's not working. Uh, if we go to the other scene, here are all of the buildings that you basically create with all of the generators as I'm using as random. And right now I'll show you like in the preview. It's going to take some time. Can you see the different screen? Mm, hello? Uh, what do you mean the different screen? Yeah. Uh, sorry, guys, that thing didn't work for some reason, like Blender bugged out, and I don't know how and why it's not working. Out of memory. Perfect. Oh, wow. Like today, yeah, live streams. Okay, so I'm going to close everything else. Um, Yeah, I'm kind of getting nervous about this. Like, it shouldn't be happening, but oh Nicola, well. Nicola, let me just ask you, because we've been going yeah. over the two hours, we should probably start thinking about wrapping it up. Yeah. How long do you still need? No, oh, actually, I'm finished. Like, basically, what I was trying to tell you is, like, once you have the buildings, uh, I'm just going to set, uh, set this to EV. And I'm sorry, guys, for taking so long. Like, I was trying to fix the problem, but for some reason, it was not working. Yeah, so once you have the scene set up, uh, you basically take a, a plane that you generate the same process that I was trying to show you, where you can generate like different types of procedural groups where you basically take all of the buildings, even the assets that we have been provided with for the scene. And you basically generate a terrain where you have to project on that plane, like, okay, so here are all of the groups of the meshes. And then you scatter it, basically. So one thing that was left to do uh, after you scatter is take an image. For example, I've used this one from Matte Paint, and I attach it as an emission shader to it, where you basically take a cube and you add a volumetric fog to it. And that was it, basically. So once you have the render, then if you want to take the render passes, you go to the Render Properties tab. And you basically select all of the render tabs, sorry, the render output options. And once you render in the render preview, you'll be able to see all of the different render passes. So emission, ambient occlusion, uh, specular color, uh, normal, mist, like whatever pass you need. So yeah, that was it basically I was trying to show you, but sorry about the procedural stuff for some reason it was not working. It's yeah. always like this, you know? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. Like, for some reason, like, I was going so well, but for some reason, it was not working. And I'm, I'm so sorry. Nicola, once I was presenting for Chaos Group in Sofia, there were, like, 100 people watching a, a presentation. Mm -hmm. None of the files that I prepared for Cinema 4D were working. Yeah. Oh, and, well, you know, artists happy. are 
sometimes very passive aggressive and they were like this is the greatest presentation on the planet yeah, yeah basically that's how i feel right now <laughs> sorry guys no <laughs> i'm trying to like uh i was basically trying to show you how to do the procedural stuff but for some reason the plane was not generating it was basically duplicating the same information over and over again instead of like using it as a generator sorry about that ah, i see okay yeah, it's fine. I think uh, what you showed us uh, was very valuable in any case, even before that. So, um... Thanks. Yeah. Let me say yeah. hi to Martin. He just came to bother us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very, very, <laughs> very... Uh, <laughs> um... Oh man, I can't even talk. Um, Just yeah, wear a spacesuit and leave this planet, <laughs> yeah, Martin. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that, guys. Like... <laughs> Jason, yeah. I would say we wrap it up because it's been well over two hours. Nicola, I want to yeah. thank you on behalf of the D2 and also thanks to the guys at Matepaint for putting us in, uh, in mm -hmm. touch and for organizing this. I'm pretty sure that this was very valuable. And, you know, let me remind those watching from home that there is a competition that they can join. Jason will probably leave a it's link there. in the description. It's, it's already, already there. there. This was a lot of fun. I mean, to be honest with you, like already yeah. just for the <laughs> shrink wrap that, yeah. you know, like. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, really... I was kind of trying to show like once you have the shrink wrap that you basically can fix the position of it. And while you generate the different floor generators, the shrink wrap is actually sticking to the same position without you modifying it. So mm -hmm. after that, once you have like different variations of windows and whatnot, then you just like scale and move the shrink wrap. That was it. That was the only thing that was left to show. And after that, I just had to grab everything and just scatter it to the same. But this also oh well. gave me a great idea for a new McDonald's sandwich, sh sh shrimp wrap. Wrap, yeah. <laughs> did not think about this, I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nicola, jokes aside, it was a lot of fun hanging out with you. Uh, thanks a lot, everybody, for watching from home. We hope that you found a little bit of value and inspiration for the, the contest. It's uh, worth mentioning it again that we're still going on for 10 days, more or less, Jason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So people have still 10 days to finish their work. Have fun. You know, you have learned new things today. Nicola, okay. anything else that you want to add? Yeah, sorry again, guys. Like, uh, I hope that I'll find a way to repay with the procedural stuff somehow on YouTube, and I'll show you <laughs> properly how to do it. But yeah, you... life, life stuff, yeah. Yeah, if Nicola, you... let... Yeah, oh, basically... Sorry, sorry if you please. do make something for that, like if you go back and you get yeah, it to work... Actually, no, that's what I wanted to tell you. Actually, if you get my tutorial as part of the contest, uh, yeah. the process is actually working there. I actually explained the same thing inside okay. the tutorial. Yeah, so you can watch it there for free. Okay, perfect. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So that's it for me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Fabio, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 it's really okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So okay. Thank you, guys. Thanks for everyone to, for joining us today. And uh, it's only one week left, I think, until the uh, around one week the mm -hmm. entries are due. And then the following Friday, the Friday after that, we will have the live judging, which is always a lot of fun. And we look mm -hmm. forward to it. Um, it's going to be a <laughs> very long judging day. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fun. Uh, yeah. But Nicola, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it was re it was very informative for me as as a totally non Blender user. I've never even opened it, um, and I, I actually look forward to maybe trying to to mess around with it sometime in the future. Yeah. Thank you. Now, for everyone watching from home, leave a like, subscribe if you're not subscribed yet, and we will see each other in a week or so. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.